she goes, Katrina, I have a chocolate cat for you. <laughs> um, abuelita, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Katrina is your favorite chocolate cat. You know it is white icing. I make it for you all the time. It's delicious. It wasn't until I walked into the kitchen that I knew what she was talking about. There was a very large, handsome black man <laughs> eating my goddamn cake. <laughs> and I also had a hard time understanding her when she would say, focus. I'd go over to her house sometimes and I would do my homework and I'd get distracted easily. So she'd yell at me, Katrina, you need to fuck us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't think you're supposed to say that. <laughs> Katrina, I can say whatever I want and you need to fuck us. You need to fuck us right now. <laughs> it wasn't until I walked into the living room that I knew what she was talking about. There was a very large, handsome black man <laughs> sitting next to her, and he was supposed to tutor me. <laughs> and my abuelita, she always made me feel very special. She used to tell me I was her favorite of all the grandchildren because I could speak Spanish, and they couldn't. Well, my heart was broken because recently I found out that she's a liar. She was talking shit about me to my cousins in Spanish. <laughs> so, I took my chocolate cup. I told them all the fuck us. <laughs> and I went home to Carlton. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> I've gone to the dollar store and I paid with counterfeit money. <laughs> While on a budget, needs to <laughs> I've gone to Chipotle. I've gotten a water cup and I filled it up with coke. Oh, okay. Street cred right there. <laughs> but uh, now we got the icebreaker out of the way. So uh, I've lived here for my whole life, 24 years old, born and raised, and I've had about 13 jobs the past six years, and I realized it's something very good to be proud of. Not really, but I just, in many ways. <laughs> and usually about three months into it, I get a little anxious, and after about six months, I get a little restless. By the time a year rolls around, it's me walking into my boss's office. No, you're fired! <laughs> and then I'll slam my two weeks notice on the desk. Didn't laugh at that, cool, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have those jobs where you work with people who just take their job a little too seriously? And I had one boss who would always yell at me, constantly, just, Andrew, hurry up, we only got two minutes! I'm like, dude, relax, we're just paramedics. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It's okay. You can still blink. Right, they don't pay me enough. Make him drive us back. <laughs> I had one job where I was a promoter for a bar on Mill Avenue, right down the street. A lot of fun. Get paid to be drunk with people. Uh, but the funny thing for me, I was also like 20 years old, and me, I got, I was working at this all African American club. So, I mean, I was the only black guy that was there. <laughs> I really was the only, only white dude that worked at the place, so it was me, and I was put with this one guy who was a promoter as well. He's about 30 years old, big old ripped black dude, played football and, and basketball in college. And he asked me, he's like, so what do you want to work here, man? And I'm like, I get girls, man, of course. He's like, and I gotta pay my mom rent, you know? <laughs> he's like, all right, all right, first lesson about girls at Tempe. Listen here. He's like, they don't want you to spoon them, they want you to fork them. <laughs> He's 
like, well, I didn't think they'd go to ASU. So guys like us can pork him and get your pork up. Let's go. And he's very, if you can't tell, he's very just uh, sexual and a lot older. And he just, he's very personal with his questions at first when I first met him. I didn't like that. <laughs> and so he asked me, he's like, all right, all right I got to know what your experience is. He's like, you have a, you have a filthy boob? <laughs> I was like, a girl's? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, man, you mean to tell me you're 20 years old and you never you know, felt a boo? He's like, you ever seen one? Yeah. I was like, what you think, Doug? He's like, whose was it? He's like, my mom's, man. <laughs> He's like, wait a second. He's like, I, I, what's the last time you saw him? I was like, last week. He's like, what? He's like, you're 20 years old and you still see your mom's titties? And I was like, yeah, man, they didn't tell you. She still breastfeeds me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I had to put on the resume. I'm a di diabetic. Bring it on. <laughs> he didn't know that I was kidding at first. So I was, uh, he didn't know that I was kidding. He just paused for a moment. Yeah. He was like, all right, here's what we're going to do. He's like, call your mom. Tell me some cookies and milk. <laughs> He always gave me a hard time, but he, he taught me his ways. Uh, but he, always, he gave me a hard time about um, that whole joke I played on him, so I had to get him back. So, you know, I was like, hey, Andrew. I was like, what's up, man? He was like, you uh, remember your first blowjob? He's like, of course. I was like, oh, yeah, how'd it taste? <laughs> He's like, damn. He's like, I thought you were talking about the first blowjob. I was like, wait, you mean you've had two first blow jobs? He's like, don't ever go to prison. <laughs> and that's all I got for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Lyra Manning. I uh, just got back from visiting my family. Uh, they live in New York, New York City. And I took a plane to get there, as most people do, but I was really lucky because I was able to get an upgrade to the exit row. <laughs> I know, it's like, when did that become an upgrade? You know, it's kind of like a lot of things that we deal with now. Like, it used to be you went through a fast food <coughs> drive through window, you got as many barbecue sauces as you want. Now you see the sign that says, oh, you know, it's 10 cents if you want an extra barbecue sauce. So when you get the barbecue sauce for free, you really feel like a VIP. <laughs> So when I was on the plane, uh, I was in the exit row, and you know they always ask you the question, are you willing to help out and assist in case of an emergency? And everybody always says yes, you know, no one <coughs> ever refuses. Uh, and then they handed out the pretzels for the snack, and me and the two people next to me in the exit row, we couldn't get the pretzel bags open. <laughs> so I thought, if this plane goes down, we're really screwed. <laughs> And even if we are able to get the door open somehow, we're going to starve. <laughs> so uh, as I mentioned, I'm from New York. And you know, people think that when you're from New York, you know, you're really sophisticated, and you've kind of done it all and seen it all, which is true if you're talking about seeing a man expose himself on the A train when you're headed towards Columbus Circle. <laughs> but if you really want to make a New Yorker feel like a backwoods bumpkin, you have to just do one simple thing. Drive. <laughs> no one in New York City who grew up there knows how to drive. I didn't start driving until I was 22 years old. And I might as well have been an infant compared to a lot of my friends who are pushing 40 and they still have learner permits in their pocket. If you're in New York City and you meet someone who drives, you'll start talking to them like you're interviewing an alien that just came from outer space. Like, so, how do you do that? Were you born like that? So New York is a great place to be an Uber driver. Uh, I was with a friend of mine, we took an Uber, we got out at our destination, and as we were leaving, she looked at him and said, you're a role model. <laughs> So, um, you know, when uh, I you know, was in New York, I spent a lot of time with my parents, and you know, my parents are older, and I was thinking that they're the same age, you know, contemporaries of our two major party presidential candidates. So then I started thinking about some of the wacky stuff that my parents have <laughs> started to do, you know, as they've gotten older, and I thought about it again, because recently, you know, there was some back and forth between the candidates. Donald Trump was talking about how 
He said Hillary Clinton couldn't remember her email instructions. Hillary supporters were saying Donald couldn't remember what he said about Trump University. And so I was like, well, you know, I mean, if this is going to continue to go the way that my parents go, the next thing you know, Hillary is going to be calling Donald on her cell phone while frantically looking for her cell phone. <laughs> and Donald is going to be talking to Hillary and trying to remember which one of his kids is the oldest. <laughs> All right, well, that's my time, everybody. You've been great. My name is Byron. Up next, a very funny guy for you. His name is Danny Garcia. <laughs> All right, what the fuck you guys doing tonight, huh? All right, let's pick it up a little bit. Let's clap, clap. I need attention. I'm desperate. Nobody will fuck me. I know what you're thinking. I look like a rejected Tim Burton. Burton, Brad, right, fuck that one. All right, here we go. <laughs> I think I got all fancy tonight. I even shaved my chest and perfect for the money shot. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta pay the bills. <laughs> all right, let's start off with a fun subject. Uh, so my grandma died not too long ago. Don't worry, it gets better. Um, you know, uh, the last few years of her life, all she wanted to do was pass away. She was in pain and she said, I just want to meet God and be over with it. And she ended up dying on her birthday which was sad for her, but I think it was hard on the family because that meant none of us were getting cake. <laughs> I like cake. I, I, I told myself years ago, I, I'm, I'm not gonna step back into church. I, I, this is a promise I make to myself, but then my grandma ended up dying and I couldn't think of a better excuse to get off of work on Tuesday, so fuck it, I went. I work hard. I get tired. Um, but it, it hasn't changed. It's like a, a lot of old memories came back. Like I walked in, and the first thing I'm greeted by is the Stations of the Cross. Now, if you don't know, it's 14 different pictures of Jesus just being tortured, up leading, up, leading up to his crucifixion. For the non-Catholics, just think of the best scenes from the Mel Gibson movie. <laughs> Good movie. I don't know. It's just this poor guy. They made him carry a cross from one side of town to the other, and then he had to plant it on a tree. And but while this is happening, they're just beating him with sticks and rocks. It looked like the worst game of capture the flag I've ever seen. It was good. I don't know. But there, there was there was back to the funeral. There was just some sweet stuff about the funeral. Like, uh, well, here, here's a tidbit. My grandmother's favorite color was red. And in her honor, all of my aunts and uncles wore red-colored polo t-shirts. Which was really sweet, but to an outsider looking in, it looked like a bunch of former Circuit City employees crying over the death of their company. <laughs> we'll be back. No, you won't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, overall, I, I mean, the, the, the funeral ended great. We cried, we laughed, and it just made me think about certain things in my life. And just as humans, what do we value? And I got that answer. It's appearance and looks. It's true. Don't, don't ever think that we give a shit about intelligence. We don't. Since the dawn of man, it always has been, which girl has the fattest ass and which guy can pick up the heaviest log? It's always been like that. Nobody, nobody was having sex with the prehistoric point Dexter. You know, the guy that was counting rocks that was learning how to make numbers? Like, there's one rock, and there's more rocks, I'll call it three. And then the bigger guy beat the shit out of him with the same rocks. <laughs> and because of that, now we have the number three. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm just... Alright, let, let's, let's get away from humans. Let's take it to animals. Owls and pigeons, okay? Now, did you guys know, on the IQ scale, that an owl scores much lower than a pigeon? Yeah, well, but everybody loves the owl. Why? Because it's pretty. The owl, it's like a Kardashian. <laughs> it's nice to look at, but it's dumber than shit. <laughs> and then we get the poor pigeon. I mean, this thing we treat it like crap. It's, it's smarter. Navigation skills. Great memory. 
But we treat that thing just like Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Look, I'm impressed by your intelligence. But if you get too close to my food, it's gonna gross me out. <laughs> <laughs> fucking drooling everybody. <laughs> no, that fucking guy was so smart, he learned how to walk. You know? <laughs> oh, that, I'm going to LA with that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Long story short, I'm just saying, if you guys want to get laid, just uh, put down the algebra books, learn to do a push-up. There you go. Lift the weight. Fight a bear. I don't know. It could be the difference between you waking up with a hot girl or ending up with your favorite crunchy sock. <laughs> well, speaking of that, i got to go home to my crunchy sock, so uh, I'm Danny Garcia. Thank you. Well, coming up to the stage, she has quite the badunk of dutch. She's as cute as a bunny, but, but she's as fucked up as a Bill Cosby casting call. <laughs> anyway, give it up for Lee Hope. You know, I love how um, much of a gentleman Danny is. So thank you. <laughs> for the introduction. I'm Lee. How are you guys doing? Hello, pumps? Yeah, I'm so excited that the weather's changing. It's like getting cooler. I'm no longer sweating through every pair of my underwear. It's swampy down there, guys. <laughs> this is the time where every white girl like freaks out about the pumpkin spice latte. I'm like, you basic. You buy, you like, buy drinks at Starbucks. I go there strictly to steal their toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. Premium blend, 100% recommend it. And they're at my house the other day and they're like, this is so weird and creepy. Why do you only have Starbucks toilet paper? I'm like, okay, this is coming from someone who thinks it's okay to snack in line at the grocery store, like a wild animal. Like I'm in line trying to justify that the three tubs of Cherry Garcia I'm buying is healthy because it has one cherry in it. In the corner of my eye, some guy is like double fisting a Pringles can. I'm like, first of all, how did you get your hand in there? Second of all, what is your number? Because that is impressive. But I'm classy. I go binge eat in my car like a normal person. And I'm like, this is so annoying because people like don't even know how to sample the goods, right? So I'm like, let me show you. So I sampled a box of condoms <laughs> with a 16-year-old checkout boy. They were not impressed that I stuck the used condom back in the box when I tried to buy it. I'm not a monster, I'm not gonna steal it. <laughs> So now I can't be within a hundred feet of a fries <laughs> or a 16 year old. How old are you? <laughs> you're 13, you're good. A few more years, call me. <laughs> but I'm really trying hard to like keep this area vacant. And a lot of older people are like, no, you're gonna want kids. They're the best things that ever happened to you. I'm like, I already have a cat. <laughs> Super convenient. Bring me a baby that I can leave at home with an automatic food feeder. Didn't think so. Thank you. Yeah, just stick it in there. Eat some kibbles, bitch. <laughs> and they're like, well, if you wait too long, your womb is gonna decay. I'm like, great. My ideal womb is like a carved pumpkin at Halloween. No seeds. <laughs> Thank you. I just really want my womb to be like a Hurricane Katrina situation. Like the levees are down. There's a bunch of black guys looting. <laughs> That's just a dream of mine. Uh, I wish, am I right guys? I want it to be like a Superdome. No way you can take refuge there. As soon as I see one, I'm like, no, no, buddy, keep it moving down the slide to the left. No parking on this highway. <laughs> Doing okay, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> but I am looking for my soulmate, so I downloaded every dating app. Because I got really bored of like doing the normal routine of like going out and meeting guys. 
at truck stops and gas station bathrooms. <laughs> fun. I was like so excited. So you didn't know if you are going to get like disappointed or murdered. <laughs> so I just like found myself going back to the two for one Gatorade deals. But yeah, so I downloaded every app. I downloaded Tinder, Match, Bumble. There was a new one. Officially given up. <laughs> found some winners on there. And then of course Rock Bottom, which is Pokemon Go. <laughs> a Pokemon when I'm trying to catch a wealthy, emotionally unavailable 22-year-old. <laughs> or a 13-year-old, maybe? I don't know. I feel like I'm getting a vibe. Are your parents here? Good. <laughs> <laughs> so I downloaded Tinder, which is like the premium level of dating apps. So people are like, you can't go on early. It's horrible for girls. Guys are aggressive. They'll send you unsolicited genital pictures. Uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what's the problem? <laughs> you get, you're complaining about all those pictures? You get to choose a dick out of a buffet. <laughs> yeah. I want all those options, you know? Get a little crazy, go for seconds, try that sweet and sour. <laughs> get in that barbecue, I know, lady, you want it. <laughs> I don't want to limit myself to one flavor. And I was so excited to get all these pictures. I was on Tinder for two days and I got nothing. It was horrible, just me scrolling through guys' selfies with a duck face. It was disgusting. And then two hours into Tinder, I looked down and realized that my vagina had detached herself and crawled away. <laughs> she was like, oh, fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> so if you see her underneath your seats, don't step on her. Some guy thought she was a toupee once. It was terrible. <laughs> what was that? I will love her. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. Girl, I'm killing it right now. <laughs> you guys have been so awesome. That was a good time. <laughs> so next is a very funny guy, Patrick Bojanowski. Thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, it's a tremendous crowd we got out here tonight. Um, huge selection of 13 and 14 year olds right here in the front row. And, uh, very impressed. Uh, you kind of got to know a lot about us. I'm going to tell you a lot, about, a lot about me. I'd like to sometimes know a little bit about, about you guys. Um, you're the closest. Um, 13, obviously. I think that's been established. Uh, how was your day today? Normally, it's the polite thing to do is when someone asks you how your day was, is to ask them how their day was. <laughs> it's too late now, it's awkward. I, I, just, I feel a little awkward here to begin with. I, I think it's because I'm so tall. I wish I. It would help me if you guys, as I kind of tell my stories, if you just please picture me as a tiny Asian woman. <laughs> So I was at the nail salon today giving this lady a pedicure. And, uh, I said I was a tiny Asian. I, I had a pretty good week. Um, I, the first time ever I had my lady friend move into my apartment. I've never lived with a woman before. Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, she's a conservative, so she doesn't put out, but um, she does. You know, she, she does get into heavy petting which I totally enjoy, I'm totally fine with it. The only problem is it's only from the waist up, on the left side, between the elbow and the shoulder, but on the inside, where the nerve endings are. So, definitely like that. I like it so much, I kind of miss the days, you know, when I used to date, I was single, I used to go out, uh, take ladies on, uh, you know, to dinner and things like that. I, I didn't do very well, though. Um, I always, you know, at the end of the day, I always felt like I had to tell them something that wasn't true about myself to impress them. You know, I used to tell them I was a uh, former child actor, former child star. I'd be like, you know, I'd sit there and be like, you know, did you ever see uh, Steven Spielberg's E.T.? Like I was, uh, I was the kid on the bike. Yeah. No, I lied. 
Yeah, but like unfortunately I tore my jeans on a chain, fell off, hurt myself, never worked again, retired, broken, penniless. So you probably have to pay for this meal, but <laughs> I'm still really adorable in my old age. You know, every once in a while you gotta be careful because sometimes you know they know you're you know you might be lying, you know, and they'll be like, so you were the kid with the red sweatshirt, you were on the bike, and I'd be like, No, I was the other kid on the handlebars, I had a mask and I was the alien, you probably don't recognize me. <laughs> cover myself that way. I don't know, it's a political year, you know, I see driving around, and I always see a lot of people with bumper stickers, and they say, you know, be careful, you know, with these people with bumpers. They have an aggressive profile, if you will. They wear their emotions on their automobiles. You know, be really worried. I mean, I'm completely different, you know, I have a completely different philosophy, I'm totally the opposite. You know, like, I put my bumper stickers on the inside of my car, you know. <laughs> um, you know, so as, a, as an Uber driver, you know, that works out because <laughs> then, you know, they don't really, you know, they find out about all my hangups once they're in the car. It's too late to do anything about it, like escape. You know, there's no coincidence that my uh, passenger side interior door handle is inoperable. I need to get that fixed. But, uh, no, I don't really use it because I, I like bumper stickers like because I'm going to try to sway somebody's opinion. I kind of use it for like a subtle way to, um, you know, get a free therapy session. It's kind of like an icebreaker, you know. Like the other day I was like, uh, you know, eating a piece of uh, provolone cheese and I, my crotch was kind of itchy, you know. And <laughs> so a few days later there was like a stench and I wasn't sure if the provolone incident caused it or not, but these passengers really helped me work through it. <laughs> really nice about it. You know, therapy is expensive, it's not cheap. Um, you know, I, I get a little older, I gain a little weight and stuff like that, but I don't, you know, really change my diet too much or anything too much. My limit is, everyone has their limit. My limit is kind of like when I start looking like the guy in the pharmaceutical commercials that's thinking about taking a diabetes pill. Then I know maybe I need to start doing something. Um, so fun guys though, because you know, they have this like man boob thing, you know, it never used to exist before nobody talked about it. You know, you had like Tom Selleck in the 80s, he was kind of, you know, big hairy chest, burly guy, he was like the sexiest man alive, you know, or like even David Hasselhoff, who in the 90s was kind of, you know, not, not that big, but he was considered a good looking man. He's you know, running on the beach, flapping around, you know, nobody said anything. But now it's a big problem, you know, so uh, I don't think it's an issue though, I think. Man boobs is just an appendage, uh, evolutionary appendage. I think at one time there were flappers and they helped slightly overweight men drink water. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like there's a natural, like, let's say there's like cave men and cave women and they were in a bathing, you know, oh, you know, like in a, in a swamp, you know, and then a, a natural disaster happened or a storm rolled in. I mean, these slightly overweight men might have swam hundreds of these people to safety. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get credit for that, you know. So if anyone ever tells you, you know, the gentleman out there, not me, you should be embarrassed by your man boobs. I would just say the only thing I'm embarrassed about is my man boobs aren't big enough, and then my family couldn't save more lives. <laughs> you know, the challenge, you know, if they're still being mean about it, challenge them to a swimming contest. You'd probably kick their ass. You know, but not a, not a race, just like a floating contest. <laughs> Guys, my name is Patrick Bojanowski. Thank you to the stage, beautiful Valley Roberts. Wow, he's tall. One more time for Patrick, y'all. So I started doing online dating found out something like 75% of people lie in their online profiles. Top two things men lie about, how much money they make, and how tall they are. But guys, you don't have to lie about that stuff. I'm 52 and I'm single. At this point, I date an unemployed leprechaun. <laughs> as long as he enjoyed traveling, listening to jazz, brought me some lucky charms once in a while. <laughs> One guy said he was looking for a virtuous woman. Then he spent half of our first date trying to stick his tongue down my throat. Yeah. So I said, well, you know, it's our first date. Maybe he was just nervous. 
We went out again. I'm not even gonna tell you what he was trying to stick down my throat this time. <laughs> uh, and he really should not have been trying to do it in the middle of that restaurant. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'll just uh, have a salad. Uh, disgusting. We're going out again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're really just trying to find, you know, find a connection with someone. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy who said, you know, I am way too old for games. I'm just a simple man looking for his future wife. It's like, perfect. I sent him a message. Your words really touched me, Big Dick 69. <laughs> Big Dick 69. Guys, why do you do that? 69? What are you, 12? Like, you would not believe how many guys put 69 in their profile. They'll put it on anything, you know? Like, Virgo Man 69. What does that zodiac sign look like? Or something that shouldn't be on eighth grade math teacher 69. <laughs> Do not let your kid take that class. <laughs> or something totally random like, I love avocado 69. <laughs> Good for you, but if I ever come to your house, I am not eating that guacamole. <laughs> oh, so stop with the 69. Guys, if you really are looking for a wife, you gotta use something women like. Hardworking man 01 or Pet Doctor 2008, or FICO score 815. <laughs> There's my soulmate. Match.com sends me an email every day with a list of men I'm compatible with, but the other day there was a woman on the list. Yeah, her profile said, I'm new to this, I, I still don't know what I'm doing yet. Obviously, yeah. since you're in the wrong place. You know, I was making fun of her until I realized our profiles were 99% compatible. <laughs> and her eyes were a certain shade of blue. And she made $150,000 a year. I'm not going out with her. Hell, I'm moving in with her. <laughs> Looking for this chick. My friend said, you know, you should just be a cougar to stay younger guys playing, you know? It's not really my style, you know, I'm not a cougar. I'm more of a mountain lion. Every once in a while, I kill someone in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on blackpeoplemeet.com. Anyone else? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> What I found out is it's not just for black people. There's all kinds of people on there. They don't tell you that in the commercial, all kinds of people. Because I found out people go on there when they're in, you know, they're interested in an interracial relationship, you know, which I'm cool with. You know, I date everybody, black, white, Latino, leprechaun, I don't care. <laughs> in fact, last week, this white guy sent me a really nice message on there. And his profile name was looking for my black queen. Sixty-nine. <laughs> We're going out next Saturday. So I've dated so many guys from these sites, I could come up with my own version of the seven dwarves. Gropy, creepy. Shorty, stinky, broke assy, <laughs> still lives with his mommy, wearing an ankle bracelet -y, parolee, a little serial killer -y, makes horrible guacamole. <laughs> That's my time, everybody. I'm tickets to an upcoming show. Next Friday night, we have a great show here. We have Miss Valerie Roberts will be headlining the show. But we just saw, so come out for that. Also, you're all uh, live on live broadcast tonight. We have uh, we have our own internet-based radio station. If you're over 50, we have an internet-based radio station. Under 50, it's a podcast. And uh, 
It's called ComedySchoolsRadio.com. You'll be able to download and listen to the show later on if one of your friends run it. Or if you just want to hear it again, it's there along with a lot of great interviews and other shows. So make sure you check that out as well. Once again, a big hand for everybody to stop.